Howdy! In this video, we're going to discuss the vacuum system in TEM. The reason we need a good vacuum in the TEM is because the air molecules can scatter electron beam. Also, the presence of oxygen in the air can oxidize our electron sources. There are four types of pumps we use to achieve a good vacuum. Rotary pumps, oil diffusion pumps, turbo molecular pumps, and ion getter pumps. To give you a big picture and to put all the pumps together, this is what we have. We start with the mechanical pump or the rotary pump. It will reduce the air pressure in the system. Once the vacuum is OK, then the diffusion pump will be turned on. When a better vacuum is achieved, the ion getter pumps will kick in to reach an even better vacuum. Let's look at how these pumps work one by one. Starting with the rotary pumps. As the name suggests, the rotary pump has a rotor. From this animation, we can see TEM is connected to here. As the rotary arms spin around, the air is pushed from one end to another and getting expelled to the atmosphere. In this way, we can get a better vacuum from the TEM end. The second type of the pump is called the oil diffusion pump. Unlike the rotary pumps, the oil diffusion pumps have no moving parts. In the oil diffusion pump, you have the oil reservoir down the bottom, and you heat that up to generate oil vapor. As the very fine oil droplets travel in the oil pump, they will grab the air molecules and condense on the pump wall. By removing the air molecules, you improve the vacuum of the system. The third type is the turbomolecular pumps. In a way, it is similar to the rotary pump, but it has a lot more blades, and the blades rotate a lot faster. The animation shows how the air molecule, the green sphere, getting pushed out. The last type of the pumps is the ion getter pumps. Similar to the oil diffusion pump and different from the rotary and turbomolecular pumps, there is no moving part in the ion getter pumps. The ion getter pumps works in this way. You have a cathode made from titanium, and the electron beam can emit from the cathode to ionize the gas molecules. Then the ionized gas molecules will sputter titanium and deposit on these two plates. During the deposition process, the gas will be embedded or trapped in the titanium layers. It's not easy to further improve the vacuum of the TEM system, but there are many, many ways you can degrade the vacuum. The most common way to contaminate the column is to use the wet TEM samples. The wet TEM samples are not physically wet. Usually those are the nanoparticles you disperse in some organic solvent. In many cases, you cannot fully evaporate the organic solvent. So inside TEM, you can air gas and contaminate your specimen and the column. The easiest way to overcome this challenge is to bake your specimen at 80 degrees Celsius for a couple minutes if your sample doesn't react with oxygen or doesn't degrade at such temperature. You can also use a plasma cleaner to clean your specimen. The photograph on the right shows a plasma cleaner made by Fishoni. If you use focus ion beam to prepare a specimen from a metal or from a ceramic, usually the sample is clean and will not contaminate your column. Here, we only give you a very brief overview of the vacuum system in TEM. In fact, the vacuum technology can be quite complicated and itself can be a separate course. In the next video, we're going to talk about the TEM holders.